hemos estado uh, we have been in Todi, we have been in Rome, we are in Rome. Uh, you told me about uh, about Rome, the museum, uh, the monuments and everything, the the Foro Romano and them. Tell me what's inspired for you Todi and what is the inspiration or the news that you feel when you come back to Rome? First Todi and then we are going to talk about Rome. Todi is where I live. It's not where I work. Todi is where I recuperate. Todi is where I get where I do practical things, where I prepare exhibitions, where I work on books. It's where, where I go home. It's my home. I work all over the world and I have su subjects that I work on, the deserts, in inhabited deserts, water in the book Evaporations. Um, now we're this new, pro new project um, involves water again. So I have to go places. So told you is when I come back and I resource myself. I fill myself with energy and peace. And I have my friends come or people I love who come. Um, it's my base. Of course, there are things in Todi that feed me. Um, the light feeds me. The colors of Todi, around Todi, feed me. And I have dear friends there. So, that's Todi. And Todi is the town where I'm going to leave my archives. And they will have my archives. And, um, and Tanya Fokina will be the director of the archives and she will be the person who, when I'm no longer here, will make, keep me alive. And um, that's why she's director of Pepper Photography. Um, she's also been my partner, working partner on this for a long time. So. Todi is where John Pepper fills his tank with gas again. When I come to Rome, Rome is different. Rome, <coughs> when I come to Rome, Rome is different. When I come to Rome, it is different because Rome is every corner filled with my childhood or moments of um, where I was with somebody. Um, we passed about 20 places today um, where I spent time with a woman that I loved very much, I still love. And so I drive through it and I have these moments. We went to places from my childhood. And I've done Rome. I did Rome when I started in 1969, 1970. And I did Rome, revisited Rome again in Saint Papier um, in 2009. 2010, um, when I was at the American Academy. I need to now go further. I cannot repeat myself. There's a painter called Bonnard, and Bonnard did still lives of fruit for his whole life. He's a very important painter. His paintings go for hundreds and hundreds of thousands or maybe millions, I don't know, but he's one of the most important painters of the 20th century. Lucky him, because all he needed was 
a table, a cloth on the table or not, a bowl and some fruit. He never had to leave home. I am, I'm always on the road. I'm always traveling and I like it. Because by traveling, I expose myself to different cultures, different people, different situations. In other words, I actually put myself at risk. The older you get, the more you have to give yourself challenges where you can possibly fail. As a photographer, I'm always looking but when I'm looking, I'm trying to find a way of expressing myself, my own emotions, my feelings of that day, of that period. But as I've said in many interviews and often said, I don't look for the picture, the photograph finds me. And I've always said that it's like when you want to fall in love, you'll never fall in love. But when you don't care anymore, that's when somebody walks into your life. Um, it's strange but true. So, and the world is so crazy right now that, and so dangerous and so, and changing so fast that I have two projects. I pretty much know what I can do for the next two or three years. And I will be doing that. And there'll be a whole series done with me living in a camper, traveling through a whole continent. So, we went to, we revisited my favorite places of my childhood. But the thing that's important to us to understand, as a photographer, you don't need to always have your camera with you. Um, if you're doing street photography or anything like that, yeah, you need to have it with you. It's good to have it with you because you never know when something's gonna happen. But, the moment I put my camera around my neck, then I'm working. And then I'm looking. And, I start, and when I look, I'm looking for it in a different way. If I don't have my camera, I can look at the big picture. It's like going to the, going to the cinema and you have a big, huge screen. But when I'm, I have my camera with me, I become like Robocop. And my eyes are focusing on dun 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 bang. And I there's a picture and I take it and I move on. So and also as I said earlier, without a camera, you see your eyes are not working you see differently, you look differently. And it's important to do that because if you're always looking through the viewfinder, or always looking at this thing, your eyes get tired and you, you can't refresh them like that. And you can't rediscover things. Um, we, went to, we went to... Going to the Roman Forum was and is important. Because not only is it extraordinary about how, what democracy there was, how you could speak up and say, I don't agree, which in many countries today can get you killed by saying that, but there's something else. Walking on stones that are 3,000 years old, or yeah, more or less, and there is something that's Again, there is also something that is very important. Again, at the 
Roman Forum we saw the tracks left by chariots from the time before Christ. And though looking at those tracks are very important for me because it reminds me of time and how huge time is and how insignificant we are in relation to time. So if we're incredibly lucky like my parents and we stayed and were able to work until 95 or 96, then if you're 50 you've got a, a, another person's lifetime. If you're 60 you still have decades. Even if you're 70, even if you're 80, when I, one day I will turn 80 like everybody else, I will keep on applying the motto that my father gave me when I turned 50, which was when I called and said to him, Dad, how do you deal with this being 50? He started screaming into the phone, never think numbers, never think numbers. And then he hung up on me and didn't speak to me for a week because he was so angry that I was 50 and he was 80, 86 then. So, um, Rome is history, Rome is beauty, Rome is fun, Rome is my childhood, Rome is innocence, Rome is love. I had one of the most beautiful love stories in my life and we met in Rome a series of times and going through those, the square, the street, the places that we were together opens my heart. And if you can't, and it opens it, and there's happiness and there's sadness. So if you cannot have those emotions, you're not living. And the important people, the important, and the important thing for everybody to remember, especially if you want to be a, an artist or photographer, if you're sad for whatever reason, you, you're feeling something, that means you're alive. There are so many people in the world who wake up, go to work, do their work, come home, eat, watch TV, go to bed, and they are physically alive, but they're not alive. I'm lucky. I'm an artist. It doesn't make me better than other people. But, as an artist, I, am, I have emotions that go up and down, up and down all the time. And therefore, I'm alive. And if I can capture something through my work that speaks to another person, so that if you are looking at my photograph in a museum or in a gallery, and it speaks to you, and you say, oh, I understand that. And it makes you feel less alone. Or it makes you feel that what you felt, you, you understand it because of that. In other words, if I've contributed something to your life, then I've accomplished more than money can give me. Buddy.